Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Day Live. If you're joining on Instagram, welcome. This is the pre-show show kind of, but if you're watching on YouTube, it's the real deal. Um, I go live on Instagram just to let you guys know. If you go to sketchaday.com slash video, you can watch the rest of the stream on my YouTube channel. So check that out. We're going to do like we always do and warm up. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are staying safe and happy. Um, yeah, life's just life's just been different. Um, grateful that I'm able to work from home and have this studio and be able to hang out with you guys. So we're going to get started. Oops. We're going to get started here. Wrong screen. And I'm just going to warm up like I always do with some circles, lines, ellipses, and all that good stuff. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts. Otherwise, you won't really know when I go live. We go live Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific. Sundays, early afternoon, usually around 12, 1 Pacific. And Wednesdays is the evening show. We go live around 5, 4 or 5 Pacific. So just warming up with some ellipses. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to sketch today, so we'll see. I'm totally open to suggestions. If you are watching on Instagram, I cannot see the screen at the same time I'm drawing here. So I'm just going to keep warming up, but head on over to sketchaday.com slash live or slash video. My apologies. I'm working on a new URL as well to make this a little easier for you guys. It's not live yet, but it'll be sketchaday.live. And that's where I'll embed the stream if you guys want to watch that kind of thing. Or just forward you to the the YouTube for you to check out. We like to do a little roll call on the show, so let me know where you're checking in from. I know we usually have some regulars here. Hopefully they join in soon. So another warm-up I like to do is circles. Um, actually, shout out to Jose Gamboa. He's a industrial designer. I believe he's out in Atlanta right now, but um, came up with this program called Sketch Aerobics, and quite literally it was using your body to sketch, which is pretty awesome. But one of the things I learned is the value of sketching fast and slow. So I'm gonna go fast. And slow and that's just to warm up my muscles just like so let's get some circles in some lines and you could do a few pages like that if you've watched the stream before you know I like to do kind of some bigger circles here I'm using a paper made flare and I'll talk a little bit about materials in a sec But if you want to join in the chat, Discord, all that good stuff, you'll want to head over to YouTube, my YouTube channel. We have a chat going where you can give suggestions and all that good stuff. If I don't get suggestions, I'll just do whatever I want, which is fine too. All right. So I like to do ellipses in my circles here, almost like a sphere that's being sliced up. Also notice how I'm holding my pen, holding it about halfway up the barrel. That allows me to see what I'm drawing when I'm drawing without obscuring by holding it too closely to the tip, which is pretty typical if you are writing. We tend to hold our implements a bit closer to the tip. When you're drawing, you want a very light touch, almost as if the pen or pencil is not there. I always recommend drawing with a pen because a pen never forgets and it doesn't forgive. So it forces you to be a bit more thoughtful and conscious about what you're doing while you're doing it. 
right, let's finish this off. What I'm doing is practicing through my degrees of ellipses. So from top to bottom, we go skinny, wider, 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 and so on until we get to the bottom. But not only does the width of those ellipses change, but the height as well as we move down. What's up, Abhishek? Thanks for joining on the YouTube. David, David, David. David wants some architectural things. Okay, I think I could do that. Maybe maybe drop some ideas of what you want to see. Um, so final warm up here. You guys have probably seen this one, but I quite enjoy it. Let's draw some ellipsis. I'm gonna switch my pen. Nice and juicy, there we go. So the idea here is to sketch a series of ellipses that progressively get wider until you hit a circle. So we can start skinny, just kind of move down the page. I am feeling a little rusty this morning, so hopefully this goes well. We'll see. I tried to get some sleep last night. And I feel rested, but feeling a little rusty. All right. So once again, if you're joining on the YouTube, this stream will not be showcasing everything. Instagram, sorry, if you're joining on Instagram, I mean. Um, I always confuse those. Anyhow, Instagram only lets you stream for about an hour. Plus, I can't really see the chat, see myself and all that good stuff and switch cameras, all that good stuff. So I much prefer streaming on YouTube. If you are watching on Facebook, you will likely have gotten this later. So definitely consider subscribing to the YouTube as you'll get alerts and you will be notified whenever I do post. But again, this is why I warm up. It makes it really easy to sketch certain things like a car. Not perfect, but a good start. Maybe it's more like a crossover or something. Oh, thank you, Luke. Luke made a contribution today. Much appreciated. I think Luke wanted to see some sort of car panel. Hold on just a sec, guys. I think my, my kids are streaming TV, which is affecting the stream here. So let me know if you're having any issues. And I'll go... I'll go chat with them real quick. I'll be right back. Let's just finish this warm up and I'll take a look at Luke's sketch. He's, he's been kind enough to make a donation here. What's up, so Sophia? Long time. Okay, looks like the stream is okay now. Yeah, it's been an interesting time. <laughs> like, everyone's using the internet, so <laughs> I think. I think everyone's struggling in some ways. Like even, 
even having video chats with friends, like you can just tell there's a difference in how much load there is on the internet right now. Anyhow, I won't finish this, but just to show you guys the value of warming up and what that's all about. Similarly, if I want to do something like a water bottle, that's kind of the other example I give, but you could connect a few of these ellipses like so. And now you have some sort of water bottle or container. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with these warm ups. All right. So I'm going to get started with Luke's sketch. Luca, I believe, requested like a dash in a car as well as some sort of door panel. And then I want to show you guys something after this sketch as well, um, something I've been working on, on my website. So we'll kick this off. Now, obviously, a lot of work would have gone into coming up with ideas and all of that um, for like a final sketch. So this isn't exactly, this is not exactly representative of, of a good design process, but we'll just get started. All right, so for the dash, I'm just gonna throw in a couple lines like this here, and now bring a line back. And we'll kind of combine these two. Here's a center line that I can throw it. Now, as I'm sketching this, I'm thinking about the cross section of this whole thing, All right? So we have, at least in the United States, we have driver's side, passenger side. Let's throw some more lines down here. And what I'm trying to do here is sketch, let's see, I'm actually gonna change the perspective slightly. So that becomes the top of our door panel. This is the bottom. And, you know, just figure out where we might have something of a seat, like so. If you want, you can sketch. I like to kick the seat back this way you can kind of see you can kind of see the door panel as well and then let's go ahead and just utilize this line now the door panel is going to have some functional elements to it like an armrest okay some sort of armrest as well as controls and really just depends on the type of car you're sketching, what this all might look like, you know, brand, all of that good stuff. But I'm essentially doing a vignette here, okay? Eliminating some of, what's up Alex? Eliminating some of the detail or complexity on the car itself. Sketch real light. And now I can think of things like, okay, maybe there is some sort of display all right, so I did sketch kind of a midpoint. It's a little bit off, so let me move that over like so. Okay, so now I have a center line. And with this center line, I can sketch a console. All right, just nice and loose. Something like that. And now I can start to shape the seats. So yeah, hopefully you guys are having a good Friday. Thanks again for the contributions. I'm trying to make some changes, see what works, all that good stuff here on the channel. Always open to suggestions, so if you have ideas, things you'd like to see, changes and so forth. It's funny because I I post time lapses from time to time. <laughs> Usually when I'm like super tired and um, like everybody hates them for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like that's when all the that's when all the dislikes start coming in on the channel. But it's all good. I'm having fun. It's just kind of funny to me how that happens. All right, so I'm going to sketch in just a little kind of storage area here. Just trying to imagine what this center console area looks like again. And it really kind of depends as well. You know, is this kind of a drive by wire situation? You know, what does this actually look like? 
related to the functionality of the vehicle and so forth. So this is in many ways just very arbitrary. Cause I'm just, we're just riffing. So in this case here, I thought it'd be cool to wrap some element from the armrest into the dash. Okay, and then maybe that wraps into my instrument cluster. Assuming it's not a self-driving car, but we'll just vignette that out. Vignette just means sketch a portion, at least this is how I interpret it, sketch a portion of the whole, rather than representing the whole thing in the sketch. It helps you be kind of efficient and not overload your sketch with unnecessary things. So placement of your lines, line weight, all of that, that's gonna help communicate depth. Marker is just really the, the extra stuff we put on to help out. At least that's the way I see it. I consider myself more of a line artist or illustrator or designer, whatever hat I'm wearing <laughs> on whatever day. All right, kind of like this two-tiered thing happening in the middle. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully this answers your question, Luke. Thank you again for the contribution. There are links included on the video frame if you're interested, if you're watching on the YouTubes. All right, guys on Insta, if you want to catch some more, head on over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com or sketchaday.com slash video. That'll take you to my YouTube and you'll be able to see the rest of this. Um, I will post the final sketches though. And in fact, if you join the YouTube stream, I will post a link to the sketches that you can download. Peace. Whew, now we're alone guys. Now we're alone. What's up? Okay, let's see, quick chat check-in. Sketches of ships or planes possible? Okay, I'm gonna do architectural stuff for sure. Thanks, David. Uh, front view of a car, possibly. Uh, difference between ideation and final. Um, that I can share with you. There's a link on my channel. And this link has an explanation of the differences between <laughs> different types of sketches. So usually if you have a question, you can find the answer there. If for some reason I haven't answered the question, happy to answer it on the stream. But usually there's an answer. All right, I gotta figure out what's happening in this mess, but we'll keep rolling with it. So maybe that's our door handle, B pillar. So I'm not gonna do the driver's side here, but I will do some contour lines. This will help us kind of decide how we're gonna shade things, what's where and so forth. Okay, so that other seat would be, you know, somewhere here. All right, back of this seat. And the seat design itself is going to be kind of a, an exercise on its own. So you'd want to at least have an idea of what those elements are or if there's a story there or something. Include all that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, kind of terminate the drawing at this point. Oh, not Kitty's day today, Sophia. They weren't in the mood to record, sorry. <laughs> this is my regular show, but I do have a kid's YouTube channel you can check out, just me and my boys drawing, if you guys are interested. All right, 
Let's see, maybe this is, let's see. That could just be some sort of surfacing line. And then we've got the armrest here. Carry that back. It's kind of wonky now, but. And then maybe we have some sort of storage compartment. Concept school bus. It says La Bounty. This is live, by the way, so if we have time, maybe I can take a look at that. All right, a little bit of line weight here. I feel like I'm taking too long on this sketch, but like I said, Luke was kind enough to contribute. Thanks again. Thanks to all you Patreons. If you haven't received your free brush set yet, let me know. Um, that'll be for Patreons who've been supporting for two months or more. Let me know. That is patreon.com slash sketch a day if you're interested. And if you have picked up my new brushes, I hope you've been enjoying them. I have been using them for a while now. Those are the brushes I use when I use Procreate. I am working on a set for uh, Photoshop as well. It's likely going to be a more limited set, but that will be available soon. All right, so now I've got some lines in place. I could, if I wanted to, you know, do an overlay here, but we're just gonna roll with it. I've got my Ohuhu markers here. And let's kick it off with the neutrals. So neutral gray three, six, um, seven, because for whatever reason, they did not include enough, not enough shades here, but we'll roll with it. At least there's a neutral three, there is no Cool gray three. All right, um, color wise, let's see. Let's do something interesting. So we have this strip here that wraps into this door thing. So maybe I'll mark that out as being red. And then, so we have red, maybe gray right through here. Something like that. So. Um, but not as a means of copying, but just familiarizing myself with what it is I'm going to draw. So the floor, let's use something like a brown. Vignette that out. I guess the seats could be like a tan leather and red. That would be interesting. So let's see if I can find something tan. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, I don't use um, reference unless I'm not familiar with the thing. Because reality is dr drawing is really about trying to create symbols that people can pick up on. And unless you draw from observation or at least unless you're like super aware, it makes it really hard to draw from imagination. So just something to consider. Yeah, no problem, Harshit. Um, I'm gonna be posting a more expansive list of uh, book resources. We'll get to that in the next segment here when I show you a couple things I've been up to. Just kind of give you guys an update. I'm actually going live again today um, with Adobe. I'll be using Adobe Fresco and I'm going to be doing some reflections and transparent things and showing just how I use brushes in their apps to achieve those effects. 
as always i will be posting these sketches on the google drive so if you want to download photos of them those will be available and the link is in the video description for that So check that out. All right. I also like the idea of making the dash gray, or sorry, brown, and then having this center element maybe contrast a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful about not being too heavy with the marker on this side. So now we have some focus that's kind of happening here. So most of the marker I'll put on this side, this area. Oh, David says, I found your channel thanks to my professor of the first year of university. He suggested you to improve your our sketches. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's been helpful. Um, I'm certainly just having fun and always blown away and just grateful that you guys are watching me instead of Tiger King. <laughs> so thank you. All right, this is a neutral gray six. The idea being I want to create some contrast to help pull out these other elements. So now we have, for example, a light light against a dark dark here it's gonna help pull our eyes in to this focus area Felix asks how do you find fresco I'm still trying to see if it's worth learning um, those are two different questions <laughs> um, there are things I like about it and there are things I don't like about it and I do I don't officially work with the Adobe team that works on the products but I have insight into what's happening and I will say it's going to get better. So for example, I don't know if you've used Adobe XD or have used it in the past, but quite frankly, it was terrible like when it first came out. And within a year, I think, and rap lots of rapid iteration on their part, they've been able to really turn it into a product that I think quickly will become, if not, has become essential. So they're at least, I know, committed to rapid iteration, listening to customers, that kind of thing, which is more than I can say for some apps that I've used. Certain drawing apps that no longer have uh, support, for example. I won't name names. Some of you keep asking about it, though. Um, so is it worth learning? It depends. Um, I think many things are worth learning. If you like drawing, it doesn't hurt to check out another app, see if there's any value there. Even if it's, I mean, it's free too. If you have um, Creative Cloud, a Creative Cloud account, it's free to use. Or I believe it's even just straight up free, if I remember correctly. So yeah. Okay, just wanted to fill that in, but kind of blend into this lighter area. And then we'll take a darker red as well. See if I can find one. Actually, I do have one. It fell on the floor here. Okay, so just a little red here. Just like so. that oh very cool for Felix Felix or Felix not that you can necessarily explain that over the stream <laughs> I 
thanks again for joining. Sorry about the choppiness earlier. My kids were they're on spring break, so they were watching some some Netflix. But yeah, like everyone's using the internet, so everything's just been a little choppier. Perhaps at some point, if the channel takes off a bit more, I'll upgrade my internet connection. But for now, it is what it is. We'll make it work. Thanks for joining again. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this. But most importantly, if you learn something, share something with a friend. I'm always learning, even doing these streams, I'm always learning something, so definitely appreciate you being here. I'm going to make the back of this really shadowed in. Well, I'm trying to decide. Do I do red? I'm going to make it a reddish shadow in the background. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll help complete the vignette here. Oh, nice. Phone hotspot. Yeah, it gets expensive fast, though. Um, and I don't have the best service where I live. Definitely don't. Unfortunately, broadband in the United States is not the best. Hopefully Comcast is not listening and decides to exact revenge on me or something. But, yeah, not, not always the best options or situation or setup. Like, streaming would be so much easier if I could just get some better internet where I live for a reasonable price. Like, I can, but it's seriously like, I did the math. I think it's 180 bucks a month if I wanted to get, like, business internet. So it's like 180 bucks a month, and then you have to have a contract for like three years. So unless y'all start watching more videos, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but we make do. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of bring it, so I <laughs> frame the outside here I think I need to finish out this center console area and then a little bit of line weight and contrast in here. Add some value shading and we should be do we should be good. Wood texture somewhere. That's a good idea. I mean, it already has a lot of brown, so maybe I could do it um, on the dash here at some point. But I'm going to make this portion just gray. like that so I'm assuming my light source is coming from the top into the right like I said that's kind of a thing I like to do in my sketches I don't know why it's just my favorite and it just makes sense intentionally making the marker a little streaky here to suggest some sort of texture on that panel Now applying some gray over the red just to desaturate. And I want to make this corner kind of dark, so we'll blend, we'll shade, all that good stuff. I wish I had a neutral gray four now though. So I'm going to have to fudge this and use a cool gray four 
and hope that it works or a cool grade five or something just to help with this back corner. I do have a cool grade five. I am using marker paper, by the way. This way my markers don't dry out super fast and you get much better blending. Also, depending on the marker paper, you do get some bleeding. This is a cheaper marker paper. Not exactly sure what goes into the marker paper, but I do know there's a coating on the back. Some marker papers have a better coating than the others. So in those instances, you do see a difference. Door has too much gray. Another section with maybe some dark brown. Okay, fair enough. Maybe this section here to tie in. I don't know, man. I'm just used to driving my Toyota Tacoma. <laughs> and it is all gray all day for sure. So I think that's just a subconscious move on my part. This could be a darker gray, but I'll do brown up here. I'll give you your wood, wood grain. I believe someone asked me if I ever use reference and I think this is one instance where I probably should just to try and get a burl of some sort but I'll probably just roll with it burl is just a type of uh, wood texture so you get these like spots almost maybe I will just look something up real quick So you get lots of swirls in there, swirly burly. I think I can make it work. Or at least make it a very dark, dark burl. See you, Sophia. Thanks for joining. Like I said, I haven't really thought this through, so I'm not super happy with this corner, but. Now you can join me in my shame. All right. Let's grab another brown of some sort. Again, it's hard with these new colors I'm playing with. I don't really know 
necessarily what I'm gonna get. But I could use a warm gray. Like a dark warm gray. Just to kind of create some of the textural things here. Mostly just for the contrast. So this sketch is for Luke. It's kind enough to make a donation. Much appreciated. Couple more specs here. This is feeling a lot better. I'll add some white as well. Just kind of lighten things up. So this week I had hoped to get to a review of a drawing tablet I just bought. So my apologies to those who were anticipating that, but time kind of got away from me. Got away from me a bit. Let's get the inside of this A pillar. Have my neutral gray seven. Just vignette that out and then across the front here. All right, and that just helps frame everything in. I wanted this to go darker under here. <laughs> well, Bounty said, I rendered a custom BMW years ago and doing carbon fiber, gloss carbon fiber was a nightmare. Um, do I have any shortcuts? No, I mean, short of... Uh, you know, doing a digital sketch. That's that's a rough one. I can't I can't even imagine. I mean, I've I've done some uh, intricate textures in my lifetime, but that would be that would be a nightmare. Really hard. Did you do it with marker or was it digital? Because if you do it digital, there are shortcuts for sure. Like just getting the image and sketching over that image is one of the things you can do. All right, I think this is kind of working now. I'm feeling better about it anyways. What's up, Dodo? Welcome to the stream. Oh yeah, <laughs> marker on A4. Yeah, that would be that would be rough. I do not envy you at all. Hopefully they paid you enough for it. Or was it just for yourself and for fun? Either way. Hopefully it was enjoyable. At the very least.
Okay. So yeah, maybe something like that, but there's a few things I still would tweak about this. Add some white just to touch up, or if you want to add things like stitches. Didn't like that after all, so I'm gonna just mute that. Actually, that has a nice effect too. All right. Remember to squint and look at your drawing if you're following along or if you're doing something similar. It kinda helps you figure out where you need to add contrast, if at all. You know, if there's something in shadow, just helps you focus on value rather than the detail that you're seeing in your drawing. In case you're wondering what that looks like, something like this, just squinting, looking at the drawing. Just enough that I can see through while minimizing the details and com visual complexity. All right, back to this white pen. And then we'll break and I'll show you what I've been up to. If this is your first time, hit subscribe, turn on alerts. If you learn something, share something with a friend or anyone really that you think would be interested. Much appreciated. Thanks for the donations and contributions. Thanks to you Patreons. Those who have purchased my new, new brushes, thank you so much as well. Hopefully you're enjoying them. Dodo says he's been watching for about four years now. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've gone through a lot in four years, actually. And recently, well, not recently, about six months ago, left my full-time job, and now I am committed to doing my own thing, whatever that looks like. Um, one of those things is sketchaday.com. And I'm just having fun. So hopefully you guys are as well. Okay, Luke, hopefully this is what you're after. Again, thank you. On to the next, I believe there was a request by David for something architectural. I'm curious what you're thinking or if you just wanna have me do whatever I wanna do. Is totally fine as well you just let me know maybe this raised display is casting a little bit of a shadow on this surface we do have a discord as well so thanks for, thanks to those of you who have joined the Discord, have been sharing your work, much appreciated. If you don't know what that is, that's just an app that allows us to kind of communicate and uh, share stuff. So we have a few sketches here that were shared by Hector, um, AC, I'm not sure who or what the name, proper name is, but um, decided to go and do a 3D model of one of my sketches. So that was pretty cool. I was like, whoa, that's pretty rad. Um, so thank you. 
and everyone kind of helps everyone out. So we have two channels right now, general show your work. So if you want to, you can join that. The invite link is in the video description. So check that out. In addition to the Discord, I've also been working on a few improvements to my website. Like people still use websites, right? Maybe that's just aging me. But um, I get a lot of questions about the materials, tools I use, and so forth. So if you go to sketchaday.com and hit stuff I use, you'll be taken to this page. And we have a few sections here. I'm going to be adding a section about books as well. But if you want to know, hey, what gear do I use in my studio? Here's my cameras. Um, here's my microphone. Here's some lights. I have a few more things to add to that, like mounts and so forth. Um, these are digital tools, little information about tablets, um, a video review that I did of a bunch of tablets, and just some notes on a few hopefully useful things that I've, I've discovered over the years. We have information on paper and so forth. So check it out. It'll keep getting better. But hopefully that answers a lot of questions that you guys have or have had over the years um, or just whenever, right? Hopefully it answers questions. Great way to support what we're doing here as well if you make those purchases through the links. They are affiliate links, full disclosure. All right, so let's go ahead and do something architectural with the rest of the time here. Let's see what the chat's saying. Whatever I'm inspired to do. Yeah, Luke, hit me up um, later. I'll be happy to discuss that with you. So Luke has claimed the sketch. Much appreciated. David's saying I can sketch something architectural, whatever I'm inspired to do. Man, that's like, it's like open field. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but we'll go ahead and, and figure something out. All right. Um, let's see. How about I'll just throw some lines on just to kind of establish maybe some sort of landscape thing. And then I can start to sketch some structures in. Not really sure where this is going, but We'll roll with it. I guess I like overhangs and very simple architectural things. So let me do another one. Or I'll do something maybe a bit more traditional of a structure. By traditional, I mean still interesting. What the what? I made a total mistake there. That was wild. It's like, what are you doing, Spencer? I had sketched this funky perspective line, so that was weird, but I'll figure out a way to, to work it into the design or the drawing here. some path leading up to this home like I said I'd figure out some way to to work this in so here we go maybe a bit of a raised deck of some sort I 
I think there's something inherently beautiful to working with your mistakes and having that as part of the, part of the drawing. At least I tell myself that. I don't necessarily love perfect, but I love the energy of a good drawing. At least a drawing done with passion, with excitement. Nothing seems to beat that for me. Keep it loose. I also apparently love large windows and openings. Maybe it's some sort of, I don't know, beach house or something. But we'll throw a couple lines in here. I'll figure out the rest. Something like that. Just put a little overhang in. Yeah, whatever I end up doing though, I I definitely tend to skew more modern. Maybe that's cliche for a designer, but I do like modern. Vignette this out. Something like that. Oh, Discord link expired. My bad. I'll share a new one here. I thought I set the link to never expire, so my apologies on that. What's up, Milos? Actually, this turned out pretty cool. <laughs> So that's what I mean, like, you know, stick with your sketches, see if you can just make it work. It feels good when you do. So even though I'm sketching with my wrist here, what I've found that works if you do like to sketch with your wrist is holding your pen just a bit further back. Found that that kind of helps a little bit. Hold your pen back, see how comfortable you are and how lightly you can hold your pen. And figure out what's comfortable for you. My professor in school used to say that the better you get at drawing, the lighter you start to hold. Oh, what's up, Lynette? 
um, the so the be the better you get, the lighter you're holding your your tool or implement, and the further up the barrel you go. Um, and I do I do believe there's some truth to that. At least I found that to be instinctively true for me as I've been doing this for a very long time now. All right, so we got our door in, got some little back patio thing happening here. Maybe I'll throw in just a couple landscape lines. Almost like this is dropping down a little bit. So now it's floating, right? So at least this portion of the house is on stilts. Red and brown. I already used red. I want to use something else. We used red with our, our car that we just did. Yeah, I'll be sure to update the, I have noticed a few of you joining the Discord. I'll be sure to update that link for the next stream. Make sure it doesn't expire. But again, the whole the point isn't necessarily for me to help everyone out, but just to create a place where y'all can connect together and if you do have some sort of tip or feedback for me or for you know people in the discord you can help each other out so that's my hope anyways all right we got a little lighthouse in the back there i don't know why i have trees there but it's all good all right, house colors. So someone someone wanted red. I could do a red roof, um, but then that might take it uh, maybe a little bit too farmhousey. So I could do like a bluish gray roof or green gray. So apparently green gray is a thing with these markers. So let's start with the roof. And I was gonna do digital today, but I kind of ran out of time. So, for Sci-Fi Sunday, I'm committed. We're gonna do some digital sketching. Procreate iPad Pro. If you haven't yet, check out my brushes on the store, sketchday.com slash store. Just released a big pack of 30 brushes. So check those out. All right, so I got the roof section in there. Well, sections, gotta get this one in too. Now I need a house color, ground color, all sorts of colors. I think the ground, I'm just gonna do a warm gray, kind of wash here. Just a nice light wash. So I want it to feel almost like sand. <laughs> yes, we're gonna do Sci-Fi Sunday. I, I haven't been sketching robots as much as I want to, just in my personal stuff. Um, I know you guys like to see cars, some of you like to see houses, but Sci-Fi Sunday will be my day, my time. So yes, we're bringing it back. Lynette was kind enough to give me an idea to sketch a moon rover, which worked out pretty awesome. So thank you. And we got these stilts here. like that maybe a couple other wooden elements on this home 
Let's see. That looks good for now. Now someone suggested red, but I'm still trying to figure out the color for the house. I'm thinking like a blue or maybe like a gray, but you know, maybe that's a little too expected. I'm gonna make the lighthouse red in the meantime. Never been to Prince Edward Island. I don't even know where that is. Where is that? But I am thinking blue for the house. It's gotta be the right blue. So let's see. It could be blue green too, but I'm gonna pick a pick a couple options here. PB eleven. Seven. All right. Thanks again for joining. Thank you for the contributions of ideas or monetary contributions. Much appreciated. I'm just taking a quick coffee break here. Get re-energized. Northeast of Canada. Yeah, I've never been there. Lilac or teal? Ooh, teal sounds good. You know, I'll roll with teal or something something in that family. I've got my markers here, so. Shouldn't be too hard. Or those famous famous last words, I don't know. I do want to take this same color though, and I think I'm gonna just to tie in the overall presentation a bit. Let's see, yeah, so I'll use this blue green under the house. I mean, if I wanted to get crazy, the house could be like peach or something like that. That would be, that'd be wild though. All right, so nice and light there. Now this is gonna be shadowed. So what I wanna do is just have a nice base of this blue and then I'll work a little bit lighter, but also, let's see, yeah, that works. So I've got my blue in. Hovercraft, that sounds good. I could do a hovercraft. Now, not entirely realistic. I should probably um, add a few more land features here, but whatever. I keep, I keep pointing out the mistakes, hopefully so that you guys can learn what not to do. But yeah, like I said, I wanted some shadowing in here. Let's say neutral gray six and See if I have a neutral gray four handy or something, something similar. This is a green gray five, but it's just gonna help. Now we are gonna be getting light from the other side, so I don't want to overwhelm the shadowing that's happening here. So meaning on the other side, I'm gonna be getting light under the house, under that overhang just a little bit. And I've rotated the chisel tip of the marker so that when I shade, it's now going horizontal, horizontally. Okay. Welcome to Sketch a Day. This is Black Ross. <laughs> happy little water ripples, happy little trees. But uh, yeah, just keep the, if you keep the marker horizontal like that, It'll just help you with those horizontal strokes. Or you could just use the brush tip if you have a brush marker. This is a green, no, oh, blue gray nine. I'm just working very lightly here. Actually, 
not using my wrist, using my shoulder to just move my hand. This way I can lock things in place where they need to be. Get a nice consistent stroke. All right, just like that. I do like that idea, Mike. Hovercraft sounds fun. So I think I'll, I'll add that to the list. And when you say hovercraft, you mean like the, one that are in, the ones that are inflatable or do you mean like some sort of futuristic hovercraft? Let me know what you think. I will be going live later today. Don't forget the reflections in the water. Yes, I'm not, I'm not forgetting reflections. I've kind of started through there with the poles. But yeah, teal, teal sounds nice for the house. Um, just trying to figure out color scheme wise, maybe it's, yeah, I don't know. Teal or some sort of you know, blue gray. Let me grab a scrap piece of paper. See if we can come up with a quick palette here. So let's say blue gray BG3. It's BG68. Yeah, these colors are kind of all over the place, so I keep having to do this little tester thing, BG4. So 4 and 68 go well together. I'm going to set these to the side. I think I could get away with these two and maybe three as well. also looks to be a teal PB10 yeah that's a teal so that's why I like to visually as much as possible check these markers because this will be green four the way the colors are just so different than what I'm used to I guess we could do a teal and gray there's no reason I couldn't do both maybe just some accent portions so the main portion of the house I could do in teal and then the rest. Rest or some accent portions I could do in gray. Definitely a beach beach house now. <laughs> but now I'm thinking because of the strong teal, maybe I'll do some sort of sunset color scheme for the sky. Something like that. So whenever I work with marker, I try as much as possible to go lightest lights to darkest darks. So even with this teal, I can go darker if I need to on the structure. Not a big deal. I think I'm going to do a salmon door just for fun. All right. So that's BG68, and now I'm going to jump to, let's see, I'll use the BG3 and 5 for any shadowing I have. Yeah, I'm going to do 5. Alright, 
just like that under this awning it was a little bit slower than I want it to be today so I think this will be my wrap-up sketch for this session Thanks again for the suggestions. And Sunday, like I said, I'll be doing a little bit of sci-fi for Sci-Fi Sunday. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit subscribe, turn on those alerts. Alerts just means a little bell on YouTube. And when you do that, you'll get a notification on your phone, tablet, computer, email, whatever. They'll come knock on your door and let you know that we're starting. So if you don't want to miss stuff, that's the way to do it. youtube.com slash sketchtoday.com turn on alerts all right so i'm going to do these pavers now or maybe they're wood planks i'm not sure yeah maybe there are wood planks like some teak or something be something like that and then Sean says hey just found your channel earlier today while looking for sketching tips liking what I see so far thank you all right and a couple lines here glad you found us I also have an Instagram if you're goes both ways if you found me from Instagram give me a like and subscribe if, if you want to see other sketches photos other stuff hit up the insta at sketchaday.com that's on the video frame so yeah Sunday we're gonna go digital or perhaps a mix of both maybe start on paper finish finished digital show you a couple things by digital I mean I'll be drawing on my iPad Pro most likely so you can check that out I'll be Sunday around midday Pacific time so 12 1 something like that I do three streams a week, different times, so that we can get as many of you in here as possible. So thanks again for making it and hanging out. Much appreciated. If you have questions about materials, just go to sketchaday.com slash stuff. And You'll see my new page where I've gone through the trouble and I'm going through the trouble of basically creating just uh, an explanation of everything I use. So yeah, check that out. Okay, inside the home, always the tricky part. Let's grab, I think I'm gonna do, let's see. The house is cool, yeah, let's just do a cool gray. Oh wow, 3 a.m. Where are you, Seth? And what's 3 a.m. right now? Or Sunday would be 3 a.m. for you. Because wow, that's that's pretty late.
Yeah, that's that's really late, man. Or early, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Okay, so some shadows inside the house. You ever look at a house from outside during the day? It looks really dark. That's just because of the intensity of the light on the outside as opposed to the inside of the house. Okay. So like at nighttime, you can kind of see everything in the house, whereas in the daytime, not so much. Okay, just a little couple of lines here for reflection of the house in the water. Hello, Hossein. We're wrapping up though. We got here a little late. Good thing is it is saved and archived to the YouTube. If you came here from Facebook or prefer to watch on Facebook, it will be on Facebook as well. After the live stream, you can check that out. Like I said, I like big glass <laughs> windows and openings on my houses. Black framed if possible. There was a moment where I was considering building a cabin. And true story, all the places I was looking at, they got caught on, they got set on fire. <laughs> there were a lot of wildfires where I live. And so in some ways I'm grateful I didn't pull the trigger and, and buy it then. But it's a dream of mine. I think I'll, I'll do it one day. Although one day isn't really a day, so I need to set a real goal for myself and get it done. A house like this should have a chimney. Maybe you just can't see it on the other side. <laughs> I'm cheating. I'm really enjoying these markers though. Again, they did not pay me to do a review or anything, but um, as far as performance to value goes, they're pretty awesome. And these are the Ohuhu brush markers that I'm using in case you're wondering and I do provide a link on sketchaday.com slash stuff so check that out Just a little warm gray here. Finish out some of the sand. Thanks, David, for the idea. Fun as always. Are you, perchance, an arch a student of architecture or just interested? What's your relationship to architectural stuff? I'm curious. I'm really tempted to put like a pink sky <laughs> on this, but I'm gonna leave it for now. leave it as is for now because I don't want to mess it up too bad. Thank you, Sean. Sean says I make it look easy. Well, there's years and years of practice behind every drawing, so, and I'm always learning myself, so I appreciate feedback, challenges, all of that good stuff. A little heavier outline. Clean some things up.
Okay, let's get some texture. This might just be a little concrete patio here. And something like this in the window might just be a person, for example, or people. Patrick says, how do you overcome perfection when sketching? That's a good question. Um, and I guess it depends on what you mean. So there's a continuum that I like to think of when sketching, and that's loose or tight. But it really just depends on your audience in some regards. So if I know that this is for a client who's paying me thousands of dollars for a drawing, then I'm going to take a little bit more time to make sure I clean up some of these mistakes. But if it's just a sketch for myself or you know, a, a group of designers or we're just kind of working through some ideas, then I may not be as fastidious about the details and the perfection of the drawing. As far as overcoming perfectionism, you just kind of have to lean into being loose, which I know sounds maybe a bit non-specific, but a couple of things have helped me, how I hold my pen. So try and draw with a looser, lighter touch and you know, get away from the death grip, as I like to call it, where you're so stressed when you're drawing and just relax a little bit. See what that does for you. I would say take a look at other artists' drawings that are loose. I've learned a lot from landscape architects, for example, and how they sketch. Like there's this one guy on Instagram and his name escapes me now, but you can even see, cause he posts videos every now and then, um, but you can kind of see how he's even holding his pen and you can kind of learn from stuff like that. So that's what I mean. Just try to observe people, learn from what they do. Tell yourself that there's always a fix, that no sketch is sacred, that, you know, it's not a big deal. I like to tell myself there's always a fix. Sometimes that fix means starting over, but there's always a fix, no matter what I'm working on. And that, that reduces a lot of pressure and stress on me as I'm drawing, so I can just go with the flow. But quite literally, your stress or your mental state, attitude, all of that will end up in your work. So if you're stressed about perfectionism, it's going to really suck some life out of your drawing. Some of the worst drawing for me that I've done, I guess it's debatable, but I was on my internship at GM because... I was just so stressed out of my mind and frankly worried about keeping up with how good the other students on that internship were because I wasn't from a top design school, you know, I was, I was there having gone to Brigham Young University in Utah, which isn't really a car design school. And that was some of my worst, <laughs> like I was, I was just so fixated and wanted things to be perfect that, and I did, I mean, I did some great work that summer, but also I did some terrible things. <laughs> so you kind of have to learn to just relax and move on. Is there a minimum level of finish for a drawing to be okay? Um, yeah, I would say this is probably your minimum. <laughs> In other words, there is no minimum. I'm somewhat disappointed that more people aren't showing the process and the rawness of sketching online because it creates this false perception of reality and i think i think everyone could use a little dose of reality especially i mean social media itself is structured in a way that rewards um let's see it rewards the wrong things i'll just put it that way 
at least as far as design or art is concerned, right? It's, it's how many likes can you get? Not necessarily the merit of the work. Um, so that's something to think about and consider, but I much rather see just some raw, live, unedited, unfiltered, unphotoshopped sketches than seeing something that looks super flashy. But that's just me. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for joining. Thank you for the suggestions and ideas. This was fun. Um, we kick things off today. We only got two done, not the usual three or four, but kick things off with an interior sketch for Luke. Luke uh, was kind enough to contribute, so gave him first dibs on on uh, what to sketch. Luke will also be purchasing this drawing, so I'll circle back with Luke afterward. And yes, these are available for purchase if you're interested. And we had a an idea from David, David D -D, to draw something architectural, settled on a house, turned into a kind of a Cape Cod or I don't know, some sort of beach house. I forgot Cape Verde. Anyhow, some sort of beach house. So that's what we ended up doing. I actually like this one. I don't know if I would sell it, but if someone's really interested, let me know and we can talk. I may, I may add this to the sketch wall in the back. So we'll be back on Sunday at probably 11 or 12 Pacific. Still trying to figure out the time. Um, it'll be Sci-Fi Sunday, and I'm going to try and do some more 